Hey everyone and welcome to the next quick tip tutorial and this time it'll be on making hats or caps in this case and particularly the flat cap which is one of these things okay I wanted to make a cap but I kind of saw these ones and I was like eh, this one looks kind of fun so we'll do a flat cap which is these ones right here okay so first thing let's get right into it actually what we're gonna do is press the combo key and you want to use a character a character's head now we're gonna pick this uh, next human male okay just double click on that and hide this and we don't need a lot of these things here, so we can just delete them. Okay, so we'll just click on this and then say delete other. This will delete everything except for the current tool that we're on, okay, which is pretty much what we want. And on this tool, it has a it has layers. So what we want to do is go to layers and just say bake all, just so we don't have to worry about that. And then I'm gonna press D for dynamic. I'm gonna press always yes. Okay, and then we're gonna go to geometry. We're gonna go down to dynamic and we're gonna say apply. So it applies those subdivisions and then I also want to make sure to delete those subdivisions, so the lower ones. Okay, so just a bit of work there, but um, you can use your own character, obviously. This is just a demo, right? And just to make sure we're all on the same page. Okay, so now that we have the head here, let's actually duplicate this guy and... Well, actually, what we can do is just separate this out, Control shift click and drag, and we can delete hidden. Okay, so delete hidden is under geometry and modify topology, which is not there, which is over here. Okay, and then delete hidden, okay, which is here. Okay, so that's where that is. So also let's keep ourselves organized. Let's call this head and let's control shift D to duplicate that or here, down here, duplicate the same thing. Okay, what we're going to do is rename that to the cap. Okay, so now we've got that and let's make sure our head is visible. Well, actually, let's just leave it invisible for now. Okay, so let's bring out our references, right, with shift Z. You don't have to bring in references, just go to texture and import, import the references, then you can just click on these references and then say add to spotlight. After you've done that, make sure you say switch off spotlight projection, which is under brush. And quite a lot of stuff to do before you do anything, which is under brush and samples, and then it's under spotlight projection here. Okay, so finally we can work on the cap. And if you notice on the side view here, and he's kind of a little bit, uh, he's kind of looking down a bit, so I'm going to rotate this just so there maybe that's probably straight right kind of so maybe there around about there i don't know i feel like he wasn't really looking straight anyway so that there should be fine and what we can see here is that maybe a little bit so there okay so like that we can see that the cap is at a bit of an angle okay it's not straight this way or going out that way it's coming down at an angle this way by the ear okay and with this guy um we're gonna do that so we're gonna hold on control i'm gonna use mask lasso which is b sorry bm okay and then mask lasso is over here okay so bml so i'm gonna hold on control click and drag okay and around about there okay and maybe a little bit so that much it's actually here by the ear so this guy's ear is pretty small though actually so i think where we have it is fine I'm gonna press shift F, we can kind of see where that is. Okay, and I'm gonna press control shift and E. Okay, E for elephant or edge loop in this case. And that can be found under, I don't think I can find it here. Probably won't find it. Uh, geometry and actually tell, oh, yeah, go edge loop. Okay, and then edge loop mask border. Okay, so control shift E, that'll do that. Okay, so that'll give us some nice clean cuts here. We're gonna press control shift click on that. Okay, and then we're going to say delete hidden because we don't need that. What I am going to do next as well is we've got a ton of menus here. So let's close that. Shift click on this. We'll have it stick, by the way. And then deformation. So shift click on that. And I want to say polish by features, okay, or polish by groups, actually. And in case you're wondering what does this do, if I open that and say polish by groups, you'll notice it's it does it's quite harsh. Okay, so, so when you have a closed circle, what it's doing is it's kind of considering the shape and it's trying to conform to that shape. So if we go to the... Let me go to the head quickly. Okay, shift F. We go down here and we say polish by groups, okay? So you notice it's not doing anything too crazy, okay? You can see the lines around there because those groups are separated, which makes sense. But if I click off of that and now it's an open circle and I do this, it just starts destroying the form, right? Look at that to that, okay? So that's what it. That's what the closed circle versus the open circle does. It kind of doesn't really, it kind of considers your geometry as opposed to the closed circle or the open circle, which really doesn't care. It's just going wild either way. Okay, so that's the kind of the difference there. And that's not just for this menu, it's for any time you see these, um, that's what that means. Okay, so back to our cap here, still in solo mode. Um, this one, it doesn't really matter because we don't have a shape to conform to. 
So either way, open circle or closed, uh, we'll do that. Okay, so next we wanna go on over to, moving on here, uh, next we wanna go on over to geometry again. Okay, so geometry, let me close some of these menus here because it's getting a bit crowded. Okay, so geometry and we wanna go on over to Z remesh. Okay, so what we wanna do next is leave the, the polygon count, we don't care about that, we wanna just half this, okay. So whatever the points are, we just wanna half that. And the adaptive size, Basically, how much do you want to conform again to the shape and basically just keep it shape. So here we don't really care, here we care a lot. Also the number of triangles you use, so on and so forth. So we don't really care. So we're just gonna half that with zero adaptive size and click on that Z remesher. Okay, Shift F so we can see what we're doing. And that's quite good, but too many polygons. So Z remesher again, it's gonna keep halving it. Okay, let's half that again and one more time. Yeah, I think this is good enough. Um, if you want to go less than this, you can, I guess. But I think this is pretty good for what we need. Um, we're not doing game ready stuff here, so we don't need like amazing topology. So that's good enough. Let's get out of solo mode and make sure we have our head. Okay, so that there is fine. Okay, let's just go into solo mode again. And what I want to press is D for dynamic. Okay, and the dynamic menu is under geometry. Okay, dynamic subdivision, which is right here. And under this menu, what I do want is thickness. So let's bump up the thickness and quite a bit, maybe not that much, that's a bit much. And around about there should be fine. Let's get our solo mode, let's see what we're working with here. So I'm just looking at this side. I oh, don't really care about that because we can, we can modify that. Okay, and let's bump up the thickness a little bit more. Okay, and what I want is maybe two segments. Don't really care too much about the segments there and Let's actually inflate this because I want this to sit on top of the head. This here is kind of going into the head, which is what I don't want. So let's go to inflate, which is under geometry deformation. Sorry, just deformation, not geometry. And let's just inflate this. Okay, just so it just sits there. Okay, there you go. So now we have a better idea of what the thickness is actually doing. So we can bring the thickness down now. I think that's pretty good. So what I want to do is go to crease next and bring down the crease level to one maybe. Okay, and then we want to say crease. Actually, let's undo that, we'll say crease PG. Okay, and then the smoothness, let's bring that up. Okay, shift F just to see what we're doing. And uh, what I want to do next is click on this post subdivision. That'll make the difference there. So let's go to crease of zero. Actually, I think where it was is probably good. A crease of zero is probably where we need it. And smooth subdivision of three is fine. And what I want to do is change these segments here. Okay, that'll kind of thicken that there a little bit. So we don't have to, we don't have that soft, soft edge. I think that's good. So by the way, these segments are dealing with these segments here. If I press shift D, or rather if I press D and I get out of the post subdivision, okay, you'll see it there, right? Three, one, two, three. So click off of post subdivision. We've got a smooth edge there, which is what we want. Okay, and now we finally have that piece there. So what we want to do next is just move this into place. Okay, make sure symmetry is on with X. And now let's just move this. And we're kind of getting that shape there. So it does this, it goes up quite high in the back and then it sort of tapers down. The highest point is actually here on the middle. So just in front of the ear, about there. And then it does this kind of, and it, it's pretty flat here actually. Not too round and transparency so we can see where the head is. I would say it's not exactly on his head, maybe just a little bit higher. So I think where we are here is fine. Okay, transparency with ghost mode, that will just help you see that. Okay, ghost mode off, you can kind of see that. And we'll get out of transparency because we don't really need it anymore. This is kind of rounded here, so we'll do that. Okay, and that's fine. Okay, and I think we can go up with the thickness just a little bit more. So dynamic and thickness. So let's bump that up, not that much. Yeah, I think about point, 2.28 maybe, there you go. We can experiment with that actually. It's not too important now. Okay, so we can also see here, um, it's quite in front of his nose. So we've got his nose and then like maybe one more nose distance in front of him. So we've got it here. We can bring it out a bit more. So I think that's fine. Okay, around about there. We don't have to be too exact, this is kind of like the blocking phase. So that's fine, and the back, now we, we notice that it flares out of the back here quite a bit. 
wouldn't really expect it to, to do that, but it does. So let's do that. Okay, here yeah, rounding as well down a little bit. Okay, let's bring these out here. Okay, and this is probably throwing out on this side here. So let's just make sure it's here by the ear, which is this piece here. Okay, and here on the front view, let's move that guy down. Move it to the side there, and front view, yeah, kind of the same thing. I think that's good enough there, but also let's make sure it's actually wrapping his, uh, you know, hugging his head. So around about there. Okay, so like that, and around about there. Okay, so that's pretty good. So that's that piece here, or this piece here. Right, this piece here. The next piece would be this piece here that actually resembles a cap. So what we're gonna do is just go to insert. We're gonna go to cube. Okay, we're gonna go down, all the way down to initialize and say Q cube. Okay, let's press W, bring that down. Okay, move that to about here. Okay, and let's give it that sort of shape there, rather the size. So the thickness, actually we don't need thickness on this thing. What we'll do is just control, shift, click and drag and take that piece, sorry, this piece. Okay, I'm gonna delete hidden. Okay, then I'm gonna go to Z modeler, which is BZM. I'm gonna alt click on this, alt click on that. So now we just have this, okay. And what we wanna do again with this piece is press D for dynamic, actually before we do that, uh, what I do want to do is add some points here. So we just hover over an edge, hold down spacebar, and then say insert multiple edge loops, and then click and drag up. And I think, yeah, around about there is probably good enough. And we'll just click on this edge. That will give us the same amount on that side. Okay, so that's pretty good. And we'll go here. Okay, next we're going to press D for dynamic. Okay, and then we're gonna go to thickness as well with this one. Okay, same thickness, I'd say 0 0.28, 26, whatever we had, that should be fine. Post subdivision, let's click off of that. Segments, we want three, just like with the other one. And yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so move. And make sure we have symmetry on with the X. Okay, let's push that out and feel like this isn't symmetrical. Oh yeah, I don't think it is. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just mirror and wild that. There you go. For some reason it wasn't symmetrical. So mirror and wild is under uh, geometry, modified topology, mirror and wild. And if I can find that, modified topology, mirror and wild. There you go. Okay, so that wasn't symmetrical, but that's fine. So we're just going to shape this so it actually gets that cap shape. Okay, shift F so we're not really distracted. Uh, so, yeah, probably like that. And I'm pretty sure it's flaring out here as well. So if we look at it from this angle, you can see it's quite round there. So we'll round it out this way as well. Okay, so let's just move this into place. And if we look at the side view here, it's pretty much in line with that piece. So around about there. But before we do that, actually, let me just move it here. What I want to do is press W, Alt, click on that so it's in the middle. I want to switch off symmetry and do that again. Okay, and with X. And what I want to do is press W, go to customize, go to bend arc. Okay, and let's bring up this green one here. So the green will just control how we bend it. So we want to bend it this way a little bit. So click and drag that one. Okay, and then from the front view, you notice it bends down. So we're going to go to this view, take that green arrow and bend it down like this. And that is around about there, which I think is pretty good. And yeah. I think that's good enough. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. I want to take these segments, bring them down to two maybe. Yeah, I think that's fine. And the thickness we can bump up because the segments are kind of, they kind of work in conjunction. Okay, so next we're gonna go to that, press accept. Okay, and there it is. That looks pretty good. So here you can see it's just by the eyebrow. So his eyebrow should be about there. So that's fine. 
and about there, which is fine. And here, I'm just going to make sure to stretch that a little bit. Okay, like that. And I'm pretty sure this overlaps. So this piece, the actual uh, fabric, right, overlaps the actual cap piece there. So the visor, I guess we could call it that. Okay, so let's make sure it does that. So let's just move this here and bring that one there. And let's scale this down. Make sure you put symmetry back on. Okay. Okay, let's just shape this up here and yeah pretty much done with the basic shape and next what we can do is sort of apply these just to make sure it's working okay so next let's just go to new folder call that the cap okay move this one up here okay we'll call this the visor i don't think that's the name of that part but we'll call that anyway and i just want to duplicate this so Control shift d press ok so now we have two of these and I want it's not this one, this one. Okay. So we'll use this one. And what I want to do next is actually apply these subdivisions. So we want to go to so let's just make sure the thickness is what we want. And I think, yeah, that's fine. But segments again, I'll go to two. And maybe the thickness bring that up as well. Okay, that's fine. And then we want to go down to so geometry, dynamic subdivision, and apply that. Okay, we also want to delete the um, subdivisions because we don't need them. Same thing with this piece, apply, delete lower because we don't need them. I'm going to divide that once more, control, uh, control D and delete lower. Okay, and that'll do that. Okay, so now we have these two distinct pieces here and we can kind of use them. So let's also, what I want to do is, yeah, we just have to work on this piece now. So what I'm going to do is go to brush and a brush and scroll all the way down we want to go to auto masking okay and make sure we select the right brush so standard brush okay then we go to brush and auto masking and then we have back face masking you want to click on that i have a shortcut menu for that so what we want to do here is and what that actually does by the way if we drag this you'll notice that because it's thin it's not dragging out on the other side there right it's only working on the one side if we had backface masking off and we did that, okay, you'll notice it actually grips that side there, which is what we don't want, obviously. I mean, no one's going to see that, but it's kind of a mess if you are going to 3D print that or something. So make sure we put backface masking back on. Okay, and now let's get these details in here. And this piece kind of folds in here. So let's kind of get that fold look to it. And let's just do that with the standard brush. Okay. And remember, it's not affecting the other side, so we don't have to worry too much about what we're doing there. You just be careful on the edges here, that can be a bit dodgy. Okay, the here by the ear, it kind of folds up and comes down. Okay, I'm just going to smooth that out. Be careful with this because you could mess up the other side. Okay, here on this one as well, there's a little bit of a lip there. Well, not a lip, but a like the stitching and the way it's sort of uh, put together. So like that, okay, and then we have one here in the middle, kind of, not that much, so bring down the intensity. Okay, so sort of like there, and I think that's fine. So yeah, that is kind of good enough, and that was actually pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is put off back face masking and now push in with this. Okay, the reasons to why I'm doing that is because if we had back face masking on, it might kind of push in and go through the other side. I don't think it would do that, but I'm just kind of paranoid there. So I think that's pretty good. So back face masking back on. And we can just add to this now. So kind of like that. Okay, we've got the dam standard. And I want to make sure that we put back face masking for the dam standard as well. It works with um, each brush has its own back face masking setting. So you're going to have to put it on for each one. So let's go here, okay, like that. Yeah, around about there. Probably not that deep, so bring that intensity down. Okay, so something like along those lines. That is just a very basic version there. I don't wanna go too much into details. You definitely can if you want to, and yeah, I think that is pretty good for what we have there, and yeah.
Okay, so what I'm going to do next is just add a little bit of detail to this uh, with asymmetry. So I'm going to switch. So I'm going to switch symmetry off. Okay, and then we're just going to use the standard brush, and without back face masking. Okay, and then just getting some of these details here. Okay, and I think that is kind of good enough for now. I don't want to go too crazy with the details here. And what we're going to do is actually put in a little bit more details, but like, for example, the seams and maybe just a little bit of the, the type of cotton, or whatever that we see. But yeah, for now, we're kind of done. So here, I'm going to press W and just make that a little bit thicker. All right, move that up. Okay, so around about there. But yeah, for here, we're pretty much done. I'm just going to press Control D again and delete that so we don't have to worry about that. I'm also going to make sure that we now press Shift F and we have all these poly groups here which we don't need anymore. So I'm press Control W. Okay, now we're going to dynamesh this at let's say 500. That is too low, obviously. Let's go 2000 maybe. Yeah, that's pretty good. So a little bit higher actually. So maybe 35. Okay, so half a million points. That's not too bad. I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, so Dynamesh at about 3,000, and that should be good enough, and eh, we can go 3-5 again. Okay, that is good enough, and make sure we press Ctrl W on that one as well. Okay, so now we've done that, let's go on over here to Cap. We're going to merge this down, so merge down, press OK, and with our Dynamesh, make sure Groups is on. Again, Dynamesh is under Geometry, and, and Dynamesh, okay, we've got too many things open here, so Geometry, Dynamesh, Dynamesh groups. Okay, so now this is one piece. Okay, they're no longer separate. And if you wanted to sort of uh, make sure that this one was like hugging his head there, what you can do actually. Okay, so separate that one there. What you could do is just mask this one out here. Just kind of see where that is. We'll do it this way actually, that's easier. Okay, so maybe like this. And make sure symmetry is on. So press X. Okay, so maybe like that. Okay, I'll minus this one here. I think that's pretty good. Control Shift E. And let's just unmask that. Okay. Control Shift E. Okay, shift click on that. Delete hidden. Okay, and then we can just dynamesh that and no one's really gonna tell that. Okay. A cleaner option would be to make sure that we did that before we did all this, but that's okay. No one's really gonna notice this. So that should be we should be good to go there. Okay, so now if we hide that, we can see, there you go. So it looks like it's a little bit of a more comfortable fit. Not that anybody's looking there, but yeah, just in case. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is just add some more details here. So maybe get in some of these seams, okay, with the damn standard. Okay, so like with this, right? So here, for example, right there, for example, that's actually done. I'm just going to press one a few times just so we get that in. And here, maybe. Okay, so like that. And yeah, so I'm just going to do that and we can just fast forward through that. Okay, make sure some decrease off here, by the way. Okay, just zipping through this, also going to take your time with these. Okay, not go too quickly with it. And be a little bit more accurate, but no one is really going to call you out because, especially with clothing, you know, you kind of have things that are kind of mis sewn or whatever. So, unless it's really off, no one's really going to call you out on that. Okay, so that is pretty good. What we're going to do next here is just take the standard brush and just maybe get these areas over here. Again, you don't really have to go the extra mile. I mean, it depends what you're doing, obviously. If you're going for ultra-realism, then yeah, you definitely want to. Okay. 
So next, let's go on over to layers. We're going to go to new layer. Okay. And on this new layer, what I want to do is just go to clay build up. Okay. Bring that up a little bit. Hold on spacebar and, and on freehand, go to uh, spray. Okay. So this, we can spray that on. Okay. Also, what I want to do is go to alpha, go to modify, and then H tiles, bring that up to about three. Okay, so now we have this sort of pattern here. That's a bit much, obviously. So let's bring that down. I think one is pretty good. So yeah, I am using my mouse here because I'm just lazy to get out my graphics tablet. Okay, so we can just do this and just create a very basic shape here. Let's control shift click on that to isolate that. Okay, just creating a very sort of basic pattern here. Okay, just to create a bit of noise here. Okay, and symmetry is off. Okay, try not to go over our lines there, but we can reestablish them if we want. Okay, those so lines basically. Okay, that's good. I'm going to invert that and we can do the cap here. Okay, back face masking would be a good idea here actually. Okay, and there you go. Okay, so there's that one and I'm just going to click off of record and hide that layer. Next, we're going to go to another new layer. And what I'm going to do is go to standard. And make sure we go to alpha and switch off those H tiles, bring them back to one because we don't want that. Now I'm going to go to alpha over here and go to import. Okay, and I, I just went to the ZBrush site and downloaded the Burlap and Weave 03 alphas. Okay, so what you want to do is just go online and type in ZBrush alphas and then you'll find this one here, right? Pretty much the first link, ZBrush alpha library. Okay, um, you can just go to that and there's tons of stuff here. They're all free, so you don't have to worry about that. And you want to go down to textiles. Okay, and just choose burlap. I think it's this one here. Yeah, burlap. Okay, so just select that one, click on it, and click hit the download. Okay, over here, and you will get a PSD. Okay, and I'm just going to open that in ZBrush. Okay, so just double click on that, and that'll now be our active alpha. Okay, if we hold down spacebar, you see burlap is over there. So I just want to make sure that our dots is now drag rectangle. Okay, and let's just drag, and actually let's switch on backface masking. So now we can drag this out. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So let's drag that out. Okay, and kind of keep with the pattern there. So this is our organized pattern. We had like that crazy pattern before this. Control shift click on that to hide that. Okay, take your time with this one as well. Don't rush through it like I'm doing. You want to make sure it's like perfectly tiled. There's a way to do that. But this is more of a quick way to do it as opposed to the uh, correct way. Okay, you can see I'm kind of going with the grain here almost. Okay, making sure they're kind of in the same direction. And it's funny if you have spots like this that it's a little bit faded out because we're kind of, maybe the cap is a little bit older, so that's fine. Make sure you drag out at the same, you know, roughly the same level, because otherwise some will be bigger and some will be smaller, which is kind of what you don't want. Okay, and there we have it. And if we switch this one off, or rather click off of recording and switch this one on. What I do want to do with that one is just bring down the intensity on that. Yeah, about a 0.6 should be fine. Obviously, if you don't want that, just don't use it, right? And yeah, that is pretty much it. All, and if you want to keep this, just make sure you click on bake all. That will bake these layers so they're not um, just sitting there for nothing, right? But yeah, that is pretty much it. We're done here. And what I would actually do is go with the standard brush. Make sure we switch off the alpha and go back to normal freehand. And what I would do is, and I'll do it now actually, I can switch these off actually. Okay, and we'll just thicken up these areas here, for example. But just to give it a little bit more believability, right? Like it's sewn on and not just some piece that's on there. Okay, same thing with these sides here. Right, just to give it a little bit of differentiation from the other piece there. Okay, and that's it. Um, you know, basically if you were to do a cap when I was doing this here, what I would do is, if you're doing an actual cap, right? So with this one, I would go there and shift D, right? For these areas, yeah, I would just delete these errors. So go to C modeler, okay, go to delete, okay, and just delete this here. We'd probably delete this, so like that, right? And then you would just put another piece here, right? That would be like the cap, just the hole for the cap. So that's how I would do that. 
Um, but yeah, so kind of the same principle and also with the cap you would have different uh, patterns for that, right? The pattern would kind of be like this here. Let's just switch these off. Right, you would have like one coming down here, not like that. Uh, switch off the alpha. Okay, you would have a line coming down here, a line coming down here. Right, it would just kind of radiate out like that normal cap look, right? Like that, and you just kind of do the same thing as this, so not too complicated on that one. But yeah, that is pretty much it. If you want to get a little bit more complicated, you can see this one over here, which I did. Okay, just took a little bit more care with this one, right? Uh, you can see I also added stitching to this one, and just a little bit of wear and tear. The wear and tear was just, well, it was I just took the damn standard and just pulled out and pushed in. That's kind of it. And the stitching, there's a, you should find stitch brushes online. There's like tons of them. And yeah, that is pretty much it, right? So I use that on my model here. Right, you can see really suits him and yeah i think it's pretty good so that's just how you make that and a flat cap hope you guys enjoyed it uh, so like it if you liked it dislike it if you didn't let me know what you guys thought about it in the comment section really like my stuff you can subscribe or check out my paid tutorials right you can have a look at those and yeah thanks again for watching and yeah check out my art station check out my uh, socials as well i post regularly and yeah thanks again for watching i will see you in the next one